Welcome back to the Captain's Channel. And today I've got something completely different for you. I would like to explore my background a little bit, uh, which a long, long time ago I graduated with my master's degree in counseling. And no, I'm not going to tell you when I graduated. <laughs> but it was a long, long time ago. And back then, I did a lot of different types of counseling. I did marriage and family kind of counseling. I did chemical dependency counseling, alcoholism, drugs. And I actually even did some counseling at a boy's home where boys were sent by the state because they had committed some sexual crime against their family members, somebody else. And so they were sent to my home to receive therapy. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of explore these relationship issues and, and what I'm going to call it is Captain's Counseling Corner and I would like to just explore relationship issues, give my ideas, even have debates if we can do that about relationship issues and I haven't done counseling in a long time because I got tired of all the paperwork that comes along with counseling because even back then which was a long time ago if you said the wrong thing, your ass was sued easily. <laughs> so after a counseling session of one hour, you had to do one hour, two hours of paperwork just in case someone sued you. And it's even worse now. And this is a long time ago. But now, if you say anything crazy online or to someone that you don't know, you instantly become a racist or a bigot. <laughs> so I thought today we would explore something different. And what is that topic going to be? Stick around. Well, this is it, Frank. It's now or never. You need to get out of here while you're still single. I, I'm not single. She's 30 yards away from you. You're still single right now. Come on. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Once you get that six months, you don't think that's going to change? Okay, so today we're going to talk about the difference between being single or being in a relationship. Preferably a long-term relationship like a marriage or maybe a live-in situation. I've been thinking about recently, and actually, I've been thinking about this for a long time, how I feel when I'm single versus when I'm in a relationship. But before we talk about that, we have to make sure that something is understood. We're not talking about right after you get into a relationship from being single for a long time, or vice versa, after being in a relationship for a long time, becoming uh, single, because your feelings are going to be completely different than what we're going to be talking about in this video. Because when you become newly single or you get into a relationship after being single for a long time, everything is great. Everything is like what we call the new car smell. Everything smells like roses. My pussy smells like roses, bitch. My pussy smells like roses, bitch. My pussy smells like roses, girl. Everyone knows what the new car smell is. When you buy a new car, it smells good. You want to drive it a lot. There's no scratches anywhere. It's perfect. Well, relationships and singleness have the same pattern. If you've been in a relationship for a really, really long time and you become single, then all of a sudden you feel good and things are great in that stage. If you were single for a long time and then you suddenly get into a relationship, it's going to be great. You're going to feel great. In counseling world, they call this the symbiosis stage. In the symbiosis stage, in a relationship, you're looking to please your partner and you feel good. Uh, you want to see each other all the time as much as you possibly can. When you're single, and you become single, you're also in the symbiosis stage of wanting to please yourself and kind of like do what you want to do that you couldn't do before. Well, after the symbiosis stage, and so again, we're not talking about a beginning stage of something, whether it's singleness or beginning into a relationship, but after the symbiosis stage, it starts to wear off. <laughs> the new car smell is not so new anymore. This, is, this pattern happens all the time. It is the human condition for us to become complacent with things that we partake in for a long period of time. And I found for myself the same thing would happen. I've been single and I've been in relationships, long-term relationships many times throughout my life. 
And I always noticed that when I was in a relationship for a long period of time, I would find myself saying, man, I wish I could be single again sometimes. And I would say, oh, I get to go out, get to do what I want to do, spend the money the way I want to always. And I would start to focus more on the difficulties of being in a relationship. But also I remembered when I was single for a long period of time, I would eventually find myself being, oh, I really wish I had a girlfriend. Oh, I wish I had a girl that I could spend time with and kiss and touch and spend holidays with. So after a long period of time, I think it looks like the grass is greener on the other side. So, is the grass greener on the other side? Well, today we're going to talk about the five benefits of being single and the five benefits of being in a long-term relationship. So, financial is pretty much an obvious one. <laughs> when you're single, you don't have to worry about uh, paying for things. Although, one thing that's interesting about today's society is, at least in the Western world, it's becoming much more of an equal situation, or as they would call it, Dutch pay. So even if you go on a date uh, in the Western world, you, you know, most likely will pay separate, um, or it seems to be more equal in that sense. However, the problem is, is right now, I'm in Korea, and in South Korea, it's pretty much you know more traditional now it's starting to change more to the Dutch pay and more to the equal pay but it is still completely traditional even though they like to say it's not and the only exceptions to this rule would be maybe in college like in university um, sometimes but even then don't don't believe it if you hear that they're paying Dutch here in Korea because they're not what usually happens is the guy pays for the dinner, and then the girl pays for ice cream or coffee or afterwards, which is way less expensive. Now, the second exception to that rule would be if you're a Westerner. As a Westerner, you know, if you go on a date, you can get away with saying, oh, that's not my custom. <laughs> Although, you have to be careful with that because even as a Westerner, they're not probably going to be happy with that response. But if you're, you know, I have a lot of Korean guy friends, and if you're a Korean guy taking out a Korean girl, it's definitely going to be kind of a one-to-one -one situation. Yo, the the second half of this financial situation is when you're single, everything you're paying for is coming back to you tenfold. <laughs> so if I buy a phone, I'm getting the benefits of that phone. But the problem with this is, like, if you are in a relationship and you pay for something, it's not necessarily coming back to you. Because this is why this has always been a problem traditionally, is in the past when men would pay for something, they always were indirectly expecting something in return. And that usually was sex. And they've always said, you know, you're always paying for prostitution, whether directly or indirectly. Because men, when in the past, traditionally, when women didn't have jobs as much or when women weren't working and they were staying at home, men were paying for all the financial things, the house, the bills, that kind of stuff. And what they were expecting to get in return was sex. Now that it's more equal, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way if we you know, switch the situation and the women are the ones that are making more money or they're paying the bills. Maybe they're not going to necessarily want sex indirectly in return. But don't be fooled. You're always looking for something in return, whether you're in a relationship or you're single. It's just when you're single, especially financially, it's very easy that what I pay for, I get something back for. But in a relationship, it's much more muddy. When I pay for something, what exactly am I getting back? It doesn't have to necessarily come through money back one-to-one, -one, but it may come back through uh, dinner being cooked for me or sex or uh, some other relationship thing that I'm looking for. People are always keeping count, even though they say they aren't. 
And this is what happens when I was doing marriage and family therapy. Couples would come in all the time and when you would start to ask questions, you would see very quickly that people were counting their cards. And it, for most people, it's got to work out 50-50. Now the hard part about this is it can work out in different ways. But if I'm in a relationship and I don't believe that I'm getting back as much as I'm giving to the relationship, and there's different ways to do that, this is where a bunch of miscommunication comes in when it comes to relationships and where most fights start is because one person has been counting their cards secretly and saying, you know, I'm not getting as much out of this relationship as I'm putting in. And that's what they believe, whether that's true or not. So financial is one of those things when you're single that is beautiful because when you're single, what I pay for, I get back. And if I don't get it back, then I take it back to the store and I say, this is a piece of crap. I want my money back. <laughs> but in relationships, you can't do that so much. I'm going to try not to be on a soapbox. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible. <laughs> but the next one is one of my personal hang-ups. And that is friendship. Continuing with the F's, financial, friendship. <laughs> the alliteration is continuing. So... When it comes to friendship, when you're single, you have your friends. You go out with your friends whenever you want, pretty much. Uh, unless you're a workaholic, you spend most of your time with your friends. Why this is such a big deal to me is one of the things I have always hated. Even I have memories in high school of bitching about this to my friends. Is I have always prided myself not to neglect my friends and my social life, my social life outside of my girlfriend or whatever uh, when I get into a relationship because it is around the world in Korea, in the United States, everywhere it seems like in the world. Now, I haven't been everywhere in the world, but it seems like a huge problem in this world. When you get into a relationship, when a person gets into a relationship, it's like the friends disappear until that relationship either doesn't work out or something crazy happens and then all of a sudden, hey friends, welcome, let's come back. Or you have to make new friends because they've moved on. This is a serious problem. When you're single, you don't have to worry about that and you go out and you meet your friends and you go have fun and you, you know, work together, party together, do all that kinds of stuff, have good conversations, good laughs. But when you get into a relationship, friendships kind of go by the wayside. And I can remember being in high school, and I won't say who it was, but uh, I have one of my good friends from high school who started dating a girl that I ended up dating after he did, I think. <laughs> I can't remember if it was after or before, but he dated her, and I remember it was like, as soon as they started dating, he stopped hanging out. And I was like, hey, man, I, I sat down with him in my driveway at nighttime. I still remember it, even though it was several, 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 several years ago, decades. <laughs> and said, hey, man, like, we don't see you anymore. This is not cool. You should, you know, still hang out with your friends. And this is a, a big, big problem. So having friendships and the time that you get to spend caused me to write a book that hopefully is finished by this summer. So this summer you can purchase it on Amazon because I'm gonna self-publish it. But friendship is a big deal and I think it's something that we definitely should think about more deeply because friends are something that are on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the third step, <laughs> right after needing shelter, water, and food. So. This is something that is really, really important, and I don't think we understand enough. So friendship is a great thing about singleness. Coming in at number three is stress. Stress has been linked more and more to almost every disease known to mankind. <laughs> the more stress you have in your life, it's like 10 times more likely you're gonna die of some crazy disease. <laughs> Cancer or heart disease is gonna come quicker than it normally would. 
So stress is definitely one of the underlying things you don't have to worry about as much if you're single. I mean, when you think about being in a relationship, it is taking two completely self-focused people and trying to make them live on a day-to-day -day basis thinking about another person. And like I said, at first, when you get into a relationship, this is pretty easy because you're eager to please each other. But as a long-term relationship goes on farther and farther and farther and longer and longer, the desire to please the other person becomes less and less and less. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. Then you start fighting more. When you start fighting more and you stop caring about what the other person <laughs> thinks as much, then you start having more and more stress and this is where crises take place. So stress is definitely something that you don't have to worry about as much uh, when you're single because there's not really anybody else to worry about than yourself. This one is also a pretty obvious one. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Okay, I know this is probably more of a guy one than anything else, but if I'm going to be honest, when I'm in a long-term relationship, there's definitely more and more temptation as the relationship goes on uh, to want to have sex with other girls. <laughs> I mean, to only have one sex partner is not something that I would say is built for men, most men. I'll be the first to say congratulations to you then. You get one vagina for the rest of your life. Real smart, Frank, way to work it through. Now there's always exceptions to the rule, but you know, when you're single, uh, there is, you know, every day you have the opportunity. Now for men, that opportunity is 80-20. <laughs> I mean, 20% of the men, as they say, are getting 80% of the vagina that's on the planet Earth. <laughs> but at least you have the opportunity, if, unless you're a cheating man. If you're a cheating man, then, you know, this is kind of thrown out the window. But when you're single, uh, well, I guess I should say, if you're a cheating man, you could still be having sex with a bunch of different women. But go back to the last one we talked about in stress, you're gonna be adding that stress factor unless you really don't give a shit about getting caught <laughs> for cheating and then you're just a psychopath. So <laughs> that, everything's out the window at that point. But when you're single, you know, you get to go out with your friends and when you're with your friends as a dude, it's great to go out and try to pick up girls and having sex is awesome. And I think this is most men would agree, having sex is awesome. And to be able to hook up with many girls is definitely a benefit of being single that maybe isn't so much for the opposite gender, but for men and for me specifically, if I'm going to be honest, having sex and many partners is something that is missed when you're in a long-term relationship. Boji hankajiman iso anjoa. So the first one is pretty obvious. Freedom in a survey was the number one reason people who were single wanted to be single. It's kind of like the headliner and all the other categories would be kind of subcategories because freedom is basically encompassing everything else because we want our freedom and singleness. Lots of things boil down to freedom. You get to do the things that you want to do. You don't have to worry about someone else. There are several reasons why being single is such a refresher. All right, so these were the five reasons uh, why being single is beneficial. So I don't know if you agree with these or you disagree with these. Maybe in the comment section you can tell me what you think. Uh, on the next video, we're going to talk about the five benefits of being in a long-term relationship. So stick around, that'll be coming out soon. 
And as always, make sure that you click like and subscribe to my channel if you like this content. And I'll definitely be putting out more of the Captain's Counseling Corner coming up in the future. So this is your captain saying, peace out. Do you love me? Do you love me?